Welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast, where we embrace our needs as moms, we learn to lead ourselves first, then our families, and where we create our own healing from the inside out to find our way to the work we were meant to do in this world. I'm your host, a fellow mom of three and a certified life coach, Lizzie Langston. Hello, lovelies. I've started this podcast like three different times this episode. Um, I'm, I made the weirdest noises. You know, you never realize how many noises your mouth makes <laughs> until you sit down and get really close to a really nice microphone. And even like the little grit in your voice, if you need a drink of water, all these weird things. So I want to make a little announcement here on the podcast. I've only ever done a giveaway for those who are willing to leave me an iTunes podcast review. I've only ever done that on my Instagram account, which by the way, if you don't hang out with me over there, it's just at Lizzie Langston. Go follow me there. I'm on there almost every day, a few times a week. It's really fun. But I decided who better to invite to help me grow this podcast and really help moms find this podcast than you guys who are already listening. So I'm actually bringing the giveaway to the podcast itself. I will mention it on Instagram, but I want you to know I have two watercolor premium calendars from a favorite artist of mine. Her name is Paige Payne. She's probably a little bit younger than I am. I'm guessing she's in her twenties and she's an artist on Instagram and she's phenomenal. I adore her work. I love her personality. Every Thursday she does free painting. I think it's on Thursday um, where you can like hop on her Instagram live and paint something with her and she'll teach you and show you how it's just her sense of community and style is so fun. And I bought like five of her calendars for 2021 because every um, painting for each month, January through December, obviously 2021 is a different doorway, you guys. And they're so adorable. One of them is like, do you know what I mean by a doorway? Like somebody's front door. Um, so in, for example, I'm thinking of October, there's like an orange or yellow door and it's kind of a craftsman style door. And then there are pumpkins and squash and adorable, like brown and yellow and red October flowers. She just encapsulates the feeling of the month and the season so well. And so if you want to check it out, I will be posting um, it on my Instagram so you can see the calendar, but you can also just go to her Etsy store, which is just page P-A-I-G-E and then Payne, P-A-Y-N-E creations. So it's Page Pain Creations, all one word. That's her shop on Etsy. Or if you want to check out her Instagram, it's Page Pain underscore Creations. But I am at Lizzie Langston, and you can come see the calendar for yourself on my Instagram. But if you leave me a review here on iTunes specifically, not just the stars, although that's really helpful, but if you wouldn't mind leaving some just genuine words of how you feel about having this podcast in your life and, um, take a screenshot of the review once it's published and email it to me, Liz Langston coaching at gmail.com. Okay. And make sure you put in the subject line podcast. If you do that for me, I will put your name in a drawing and I have two of these beautiful calendars that are actually pretty huge. I, I ordered, like I said, five of them. It was a big package <laughs> that came and there were, they're just beautiful, gorgeous. And they encapsulate, like I said, the season so well, and we get to support a fellow, um, mom entrepreneur. So I'm so pumped about this giveaway. Cause I love Paige. She doesn't even know I'm saying this by the way. She does not even know <laughs> that I'm featuring her calendar in my giveaway. It just delights me. And I can't wait for each of you to have it in your home because I'm going to have it in my home this year. And I'm also secrets out guys. Don't tell. I'm going to probably give a couple away to some women in my family. <laughs> so, um, get over there and leave an, a review. It's really, really easy to do. If you just Google, um, podcast review on iTunes, it shows you how, but if you're on a phone, it's the easiest. In my opinion, you just go to my podcast and then swipe all the way down to the bottom and you have the option to leave a review. And then you literally just click the stars, type in your note, press publish. You might have to pick your little screen name, but yeah, it's really simple. I would appreciate that so much. And I will put you in the drawing for the giveaway. So just to review, you're going to do the 
um, review on iTunes, and then you are going to email me, Liz Langston, L-A-N-G-S-T-O-N, coaching at gmail.com, subject title podcast. Just attach a screenshot of your review, and I will enter you in the drawing, and we're going to do the drawing on the 23rd, so a week from today. So next Wednesday, December 23rd. So you have a week, and that way I can make sure the calendar gets to you before the new year, and you will be able to have it hang in your home. It will be in my downstairs bathroom. Where will it be in your home? I don't know. Go do the review. I'm so excited. Okay, so on to today's topic, healing is possible. I feel like I just got a very serious tone. (laughs) But here's why this is, I don't know that it's serious, but kind of. Here's the deal. When you believe that it's possible for you to heal from anxiety and depression, or it's possible for you, genuinely, you can extend this to anything, whether it's losing weight or it's stopping cussing or yelling at your kids, whatever it is that you really want to stop doing or start doing that you haven't before it's important that you cultivate the belief that it's possible. Now, this might just sound warm and fuzzy, but as a life coach, I've actually learned how to really create and manifest things in the world. And there's three stages to that. And I'm just going to review these quickly. And then I'm going to go into where we get stuck when it comes to healing from anxiety and depression, postpartum, or healing from our birth trauma, or healing from any, really anything physically, mentally, emotionally, all of it. Sometimes there's a a big thing that we need to heal from. Maybe it's trauma of some kind, but whatever it is for you, um, the important first step is to know that healing is possible and to really feel that in your bones. So how you actually create something new that you've never done before, how you actually heal when all the odds seem against you. Isn't that what it feels like, by the way, right? When you're in postpartum anxiety and you're in postpartum depression, Sometimes you just ask yourself, will I ever feel better? I remember actually posting that on Instagram when I was in the middle of my very first experience with anxiety and depression. I had never experienced either of those. And after my second baby, Rosalyn, it just was so different what was going on in my mind and in my body. And I was like, where did my happy Lizzie go? And my husband was thinking the same thing. I really had no experience with anxiety and depression until kids came and it was in one sense, devastating because I just felt like I was lost and I, I didn't know where I went. And in the other sense, it was really scary because I didn't know how I'd ever get back to what I thought was normal. I want to tell you people, women, you guys were always like, I just want to get back to normal. And on my consults and wherever I get a chance to speak to you guys, I I love to say that we don't want to get back to normal. We can't get back to normal because normal is when you really didn't have experience with anxiety and depression at this level that we don't want that. We want you to know how to handle these in a way that you never deal with them again. And I know the the lower brain always wants what's easy. So we're like, no, really, Lizzie, I just want to get back to normal. Like, can we just do that? Can we go backwards? I just want to be where I was before any of this ever happened, before I had kids, before I turned into the grumpster, (laughs) the Grinch. But really, if you think about it, while you're at it, while you're doing the work of feeling better, you might as well invest and get yourself some tools so that you never have to deal with this again, so that you're not questioning your sanity when the next baby rolls around or when somebody in your family passes away. Let's do it right. And let's do it right the first time. But in order to do that, in order to heal truly and to come out stronger on the other side, you have to believe that it's possible first. This sounds like a simple thing, but you would be surprised how many of us actually don't believe that we can heal as much as we think we can. So the first steps, there's three degrees of believing. There's possibility, which then turns into probability, and then inevitability. So possibility is where you start. Well, Lizzie healed from postpartum depression. Obviously, she hosts this podcast. She helps hundreds of women heal from theirs. So it's possible that I could, even without medications, possibly even without anything, like it's possible I could create healing for myself. And then once you think that it's possible, you start to get more into probably like I probably will. I'm listening to this podcast. I am reading this book. I am thinking about coaching or whatever, you know, whatever things you're doing, you just start to get warmer. You start to take small actions more privately. And then 
you go into almost coast mode where you don't have to think about, is it possible or is it not possible? That kind of falls off your radar and you are grounded and sure that it's inevitable. And this is the part, this is the point when women sign up for coaching is without being on the consult sometime before the consult, you guys, you're here on the podcast and you're like, it's possible. And then maybe you book the consult and you start talking to me, you're like, it's probable, but By the time you're ready to invest in yourself and say yes to you, you want it to feel inevitable. And really it takes that belief in order to, um, spend money on ourselves in order to show up week after week and do the work. But the good news is this, when you believe healing is inevitable and it's possible for you, you literally will find it and you will create it. Here's why. And then I'm going to go into the three ways we get stuck on this, just like troubleshooting. But the reason why it's so powerful for you to believe this is because of cognitive bias. In other words, your brain shows you what you think. So if you think that there's a scary creeper guy in the haunted house, when you go through it at Halloween, your brain will like find evidence everywhere that he's right there. You'll be looking for it. You'll be like, Oh my gosh, is he behind that thing? I'm sorry if this is like triggering. I personally don't love haunted houses at all. So think of like, not so scary haunted house. I don't know why I'm using this example, but it's a good one. So your brain, and you know how, um, when you were little and you were like, there's, if you think there's a monster in the closet, literally you can create things. Okay. Maybe that's a better example. Let's drop the haunted house. We'll go to the closet. I remember I used to think there were skeletons in my closet And I kid you not, you guys, I would close my eyes under the covers and then I'd get brave and open my eyes real quick and peek at my closet, which was, you know, halfway open, just one of those sliding bedroom closets, a little halfway open. So all I could see was black and then the white door and in the blackness, like my eyes totally fabricated it, but I could see skeletons and they felt real to me. Like they looked so real. My brain had literally concocted skeletons in my closet because I had the belief there's a skeleton in my closet. (laughs) Our brains are so powerful. It's insane. It's amazing. It's such a gift. Your brain is the best gift that you have in your healing. Your Let me say that again. Your brain is the best gift that you have in healing. And your brain can really work with your body, which is what I teach my clients to do in specific ways, to calm your anxiety and to help you come out of your um, depression. We de-escalate panic attacks And we literally lift ourselves one degree at a time out of depression in actual real ways. This happened for me. I did this. I literally did this. It's possible for you. So when you believe healing is not possible, and we're going to talk about three reasons why that kind of happens and ways that you might not expect, by the way, then you don't find it, even if you really, really want it. So that's why it's important to check your possibility gauge. How possible do you believe healing is for you at this point in your journey? When you do believe it's possible, it's just a matter of time and it becomes inevitable that you do find healing. And that's why I'm addressing this today. So without further ado, let's go into why don't we believe this or what are the ways that detract from our ability to heal ourselves and our ability to actually create healing from depression, from anxiety, from birth trauma? What are the ways that we detract from our own power to heal, maybe even without noticing it? So there's a couple things. The first thing is when you're in depression, you're just naturally really skeptical to begin with. You're just in a low emotional place. So depression itself can actually be an obstacle to believing that you can heal. So when you're in the depression, it's really important that you um, surround yourself with people and that you surround yourself with influences that are examples that healing is possible so that your brain can start to collect evidence that it's also possible for you. Another thing that gets in the way of us believing big in healing and really getting going with it and getting on the road to healing is anxiety itself, right? So let's say you're like, yeah, I want to heal. Like for example, coaching, let's say you're like, yeah, I want to coach with her, but what if I'm the exception? And all of her wonderful client testimonials won't work for me because there's something wrong with me. That's always what we think, right? We're like, something's wrong with us. No, healing happens for all the other people, not for me. Or anxiety is lives in the what ifs, lives in the unknown, it lives in the future. So you notice how your anxiety can creep and crawl into your head and actually cut you off from the very 
um, vision of you being able to heal and from the possibility of really feeling that possibility that you can heal. And that's crazy, right? Because the whole thing you want to heal is the anxiety. And yet sometimes the anxiety itself is the thing that keeps us from really firmly believing in our bones that we can heal. So the first work that I want you to do, even before you come on a consult with me, although you can come on and I can help you with this, but is this is, this is the preliminary ultimate groundbreaking foundation setting belief for anybody that's going to make the journey that I made, um, from being depressed and anxious all the way to healthy, thriving, strong woman is healing is possible for me. And I want you to just play in possibility. If your brain argues with this, just play in possibility. If you already know very firmly that it's possible, then play in probability and see how it's very likely that it could happen and then get to the place where it feels inevitable. And specifically with me, that happened when I found coaching and I had like actually tangible tools. I think so many times we go, for example, we call our OB and go in for an appointment to talk about our mental health postpartum, or we call the hospital support group and they're like, you can do this. And they're cheerleaders. And they just say things like, go get some self-care. I know that's what, I mean, that's what the therapist that I saw was like, here's some homeopathic supplements. Here's a permission slip for self-care and show it to your husband and just make sure you take care of yourself. But like, I already knew self-care was important. And so did he, that didn't help me actually take care of myself, right? Because all actions start in our thoughts. So when I um, had the empowering tools of life coaching and I got to my thoughts, that's when my feelings changed. And when I, and then me specifically, I've, I want to say patented, I almost said patented, except it's, it's not patented, but I have my own signature way of helping women get into their bodies that I've developed specifically for postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety, having lived through it and having helped dozens of clients now through it. And so, um, those were, Those were things that gave me hope, but I didn't even, I did not, let me reiterate this. I did not even find life coaching until I believed healing was possible. I didn't even turn on a podcast until I believed that healing was possible. And so what's crazy is you literally will miss the, the most effective help in your realm and in your circle right now, if you're not in this belief. All right. So the three things that trip us up with this the common beliefs here. Number one, healing happens outside of us. And this was me. I kind of thought that my doctor was supposed to heal me a little bit. And I remember this was reinforced by other people who were like, let's get you in to see your doctor. Not that I'm telling you not to go to your doctor, but who is responsible for your healing and who is responsible in believing that healing is possible? Is it your doctor's job to give you the hope that you can heal? Truly, is that the doctor's job? Or is his job just to just tell you what he's seeing and diagnose it and offer you some medications, but you are the person working towards your healing. He's just helping you or she is just helping you as a partner in that, hopefully. Um, So just, it's a tricky thing, but sometimes we think healing can happen outside of us. Another way I hear this very subtly delegated is like, give it time, just give it time and you'll feel better. This is like the most erroneous thing that older moms say to younger moms, Oh honey, just give it time. This is just a crazy chapter. And that's very corrosive and dismissive. And what happens is we're like, okay, if I just wait, I'll feel better as if time somehow brings upon us this healing balm. How nice would that be? By the way, that would be lovely. Can somebody make that happen? That would be so lovely if time healed us, but actually what often happens is with each passing day, we just happen to be thinking new thoughts. And sometimes those thoughts end up have, we feel more positive feelings, but sometimes we can also feel more negative feelings. So it's not time. It's definitely our thoughts creating our feelings either way, but that's a subtle way of um, healing happens outside of us. And that trips us up on being empowered to know that we can create healing and that healing is possible. The second little way, the snag in the belief that healing has possible. And this one is like the saddest to me, but it's also really common. And I want you to just check in with yourself is this idea that it's never happened in the past. I've never been able to heal up to this point. And so it won't ever happen. And so we get complacent and we just are sad and we accept, right? So we're like, well, I've never been able to heal. So I won't ever be able to heal. The circumstances in which this is really common is if you have been struggling with anxiety and or depression since you were young, 
teenage years, or even, I mean, I've had a client was like, you know, in her childhood, eight or nine years old being, seeing doctors and being diagnosed with, um, depression and, or anxiety. So oftentimes when our brain has a lot of evidence that we're going to just live with this forever, we've never been able to fully heal and be free of this and be thriving. That's what I mean by healing is just being free of it and thriving and having it just be like a background noise instead of in your face every day, your anxiety and your depression. But yeah, when our brain has all that evidence from our past that we haven't been able to heal, sometimes your cognitive bias will literally cut you off from potential opportunities to truly heal. And you will be dismissive about the most effective options because your brain believes that you will never actually be able to be free of this. You'll get skeptical. This is how it is a lot of times when moms have tried for a long time to stop yelling and hitting their kids. Um, and they've been in depression or just unhappy as moms, they get really skeptical of life coaching because they're like, really, you can actually be happy. It's never worked for me. And I've tried so many times and we almost get jaded to where we're sick of trying, but that's so sad because there actually is coaching with me and it actually works. And, um, but it can't work for you if you don't believe that it will work and you won't believe it will work if you don't believe that healing is possible. Do you see how that works? So that's why it's really important, um, to work on this belief, especially if you have a past really riddled with, um, efforts to get yourself out of this and then failing or feeling like you're just still stuck. That's the, that's when it's the most important time to exercise this belief that healing is possible. That's when you need it even more. Another common time that we kind of dismiss really amazing options that can help us heal is if there's a family history and the tone in which your, let's say your mother and your grandmother both had severe postpartum depression and they kind of talk to you about it as if there's nothing you can do about it and you're just going to have to go through it just like they did. This is really dangerous thinking because it totally turns your brain off to its own creativity and to its own problem solving to be able to find a solution that could potentially change your family history that could potentially help you feel totally differently than the other people in your life. So you, if there were new tools that your mother and grandmother, for example, didn't have that could change the game for you, you would never see them. If your belief was that you're just always going to live with this and that this isn't, you know, you're not able to pull out of this because it's just your family history, or you've just had this diagnosis forever. You're just always going to have it. So that's why you really want to check into some of those complacent beliefs that just feel true to you. But what if they're not right? Like what if healing is the most realistic thing at this point, and you've just not been seeing it this whole time. And then the third way that I see women giving up and trading out belief that healing is possible kind of inadvertently is this idea that healing happens when our hormones change or our brain chemicals change. Now, I'm not saying that's not true, but when you delegate your healing to any part of your body having to change first, you miss out on your brain power contributing to your healing. And you miss out on your brain's ability to create solutions for you and your brain's ability to think creatively and originally to put pieces together and really expedite your healing. You don't get all that. And you just kind of sit back and wait, or you book a a bunch of appointments with an OBGYN or a hormone specialist, which is great. It's not bad, but we want the backbone as you go and do those types of appointments We want you to carry this belief that healing is totally possible because you will be such a better student or patient for them. You will be so much more interactive. You won't just be like, oh, well, the drugs didn't work. Uh, What's next? You'll be like, okay, I noticed this feeling and I noticed this side effect. What do you think, doctor, about this? You're going to counsel with them. You're going to be an active participant in your healing. Whereas if you're just like, oh, my hormones are out of whack, so that's why I need to heal um, or that's what's wrong, right? Then you delegate to your doctor and to your hormones and even the medications. And you're kind of not even realizing it. You're kind of passive in your brain approach and in your cognitive, the way you show up there. And I got to say like the way your bot or the way your brain is engaged 
definitely plays a role in the way your body is engaged in the way it responds to any, um, medications you might be taking or the way that it, you respond to any treatments that you go and get. So last but not least, this is, and I think I've said this earlier, but this is pivotal in the coaching relationship. So in coaching, we're working a lot with your body and a lot with your mind. And in order to get you to a place where you are ready for coaching and and you can get literally get the results. Coaching is so powerful, but we need this belief. This belief really, really helps you get what you came for. Healing is possible. So no matter what solutions you're already trying or what solutions you're considering trying, work on this belief that healing is possible and notice how your brain starts to gather evidence because that's just what brains do. They prove themselves right. They gather evidence to support their own beliefs. This is how the brain works. So choose your beliefs in a way that gathers the evidence you want in your life. If you believe healing is possible, healing will be possible. This is the belief that I believed when I was sitting on the couch over 800 miles away from my kids because I just couldn't take them anymore. So my in-laws took them for me for like a week and I was in a different state and I just took some time to myself and I sat on this couch And I had tried all the things, you guys. I tried antidepressants. I tried therapy with a PhD in postpartum support. I tried support groups at the local hospital. And ultimately, I took this into my own hands. And I decided that even if it was an unconventional method or an unconventional way, I was going to find healing because I was not willing to let my motherhood slip out of my fingers. And I was not willing to let my motherhood standards settle any lower. And right when I believed that is when I reached out and literally like I came across a coaching podcast. So when the student is ready, the teacher appears, the solution appears. I cannot stress enough the importance of this belief. I know that you can heal and this is where it starts the belief that healing is possible. So get believing. Don't forget about giving me a podcast review, taking a screenshot of it when it's published and emailing it to Liz Langston coaching at gmail.com subject line podcast. And I will put you in the drawing to win one of page pain creations, um, cute watercolor, uh, door calendars by next Wednesday. All right. The 23rd of December. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, Lizzie here. I've helped dozens of postpartum moms just like you to manage their postpartum anxiety and deconstruct their postpartum depression. It's really easy for me. So if you're ready to feel better, I know the way. Let's chat on the phone. Set up a time by going to lizzylangston.com forward slash consult. It's pretty simple and I will be calling you soon.